Hi everyone and welcome to Oscar Outdoors. Join me in this one as a hammock camp in some heavy rain. As in the little intro, I'm out camping in the rain yet again. Uh, something about the rain just calls to me and says, get your backside out there and go and enjoy yourself, Scott. So that's exactly what I've done. But um, just quickly reflecting on what a week we've had here in the UK uh, with the fuel crisis. Well, it's not even a fuel crisis, is it? We've got enough fuel, we just haven't got the uh, trained, skilled drivers uh, to get the fuel to the stations. So people have been going absolutely bananas, uh, filling up carrier bags and bin liners full of diesel, putting them in the car. They're just, there's no common sense. So with that in mind, uh, I've stayed local tonight. I've not gone on any sort of expeditions. Uh, I've just come to the local permission woodland and I'm going to be hammock camping in the, uh, the one wind setup. Um, I'm going to be using the one wind tarp in the rain for the first time. I've just done a review on that, which I'll flash up on screen for you now. Uh, but yeah, for now, let's uh, get set up. I'll see you in a second. This is uh, my new backpack that one of my subscribers kindly picked up for me from Go Outdoors. So it is the Van Gogh Sherpa uh, 7080 I think it is. I do have the 65 in all black. But the uh, local go outdoors was closing down near him and I couldn't resist this. So thank you very much for picking this up. And this is its uh, sort of virgin use. So thank you for that. Right, let's get the tarp out. close the doors. It's one of the cool features about this tarp. Okay and you can see I've utilised the clips on there and a little bit of bungee. Should we take a peek inside? There you go so the doors on the far end are shut. You can see the hammock straps will just come nicely through that peak there. And this will keep out any inclement weather. Really looking forward to this. Really like this tarp. As I said, um, I've done a review on it. And there'll be a link in the description to go and purchase one with the discount code. Uh, for using my link. Absolutely brilliant. Right, I'm going to get in the tarp for 10 minutes to dry off. So I'll see you in a sec. So I'm just shielding out of rain for 10 minutes. Oh, and this tarp. Absolutely spot on. You can see that I've still got quite a lot of room, a lot of manoeuvrability, but once I get the hammock in here, it's going to reduce quite a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the hammock part, part up um, and utilise another bit of equipment that I brought with me tonight. Just very, very simple and just sort of get some of the gear off the floor, dry, 
Uh, so I'm going to go get my bag. I'll see you in a second. So if you're a regular to my channel, you will have seen this before on my uh, hammock tips videos. Now what I've kept in here uh, for this trip, I'm quite glad of, is this just a simple camping washing line. I'm going to utilise this before I get my hammock up. See, it's still pretty early in the day. But yeah, just a little bit of bungee, sort of twisted, so that you can put garments through and just keep things dry. So we'll uh, give that a go now. Right, so I've got the washing line up above me. What I've done is I've utilised the ends of the tarp and clipped into there. Because going around the trees was just a little bit too far apart. Uh, but I'm going to get this, my bag in here. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of cooking while I've got the tarp like this. And utilise the washing line before I need to get my hammock up. Well, as you can see, I've uh, now got the washing line up. All the doors closed. I think it's time to cook some lunch. Um, yeah, I'm liking the little space that I've got in here, the little working. I've obviously got you in the corner there. I'm in the corner on my little camping chair. Um, and I've got plenty more space. So I'll get all this gear dry before I can get the hammock open. Brilliant. Right, let's get cooking. So first of all, I've got a choice of coffee. Uh, I've just been to pick these up from uh, b &M. So we've got a uh, hazelnut, white chocolate raspberry, uh, amaretto almond, maple fudge, mint chocolate, chocolate orange, uh, caramel popcorn, cookie dough, creamy caramel, double chocolate, coconut delight and Irish cream. I think out of them, I want to actually try the uh, chocolate orange. Can you see it on there? Yeah, beanie's chocolate orange. Uh, just a quick drink, and then I've got uh, quite a nice lunch, so I'll uh, let you see it when I'm cooking it. almost getting ready to boil. Uh, so what I've got for lunch, uh, or the first part of lunch, is just quite simply uh, an Aldi's own pot noodle. I'm going to have the water for that and the coffee and then I'm going to cook the rest of my lunch straight away. Right then, let's uh, just come and take oil and just turn it, up, it off. That should do. Get this uh, chocolate orange coffee on the go as well. Same water. Keeping all my rubbish together. <laughs> Do that a bit of a stir in a second. Right, let's get the rest of my tea. Yeah, punch. 
This is more I'm just opening up uh, a bottle of oil that I've brought that I need for my tea later on. So I've just put some gaffer tape uh, around the lid just to sort of prevent any sort of leaking or anything into any sort of carrier bag or all like that. So now we've done that. A dab of oil. Lid back on because we need that for run. Get this oil warm. Right. So just while I uh, think on. All the food and drink in this video has been paid for by one of my subscribers. Uh, I've not asked permission to name him, but you know who you are. Uh, so thank you very, very much. Um, he sent me the money after my last camp when I was in the Svalbard. Um, and basically just to get a steak on me. So I've managed to get quite a lot of food out of the money that you've sent, as you, you'll see in uh, the video. So everything, all the food, all the drink has all come from you. So thank you so, so much. Now then, so I've done a bit, a little bit of prep work at home uh, for my lunch. But my tea, hopefully, I'm going to be making all from scratch. So first of all, we've just got a nice little bit of chicken. And then here we've just got a nice bit of peppered steak. You didn't really think I was just going to eat a pot noodle, did you? <laughs> so I've got my uh, heat resistant glove again. <laughs> so if you're uh, following me on Facebook uh, personally, you'll have seen that today I asked my daughter Bella what she wanted for lunch. And she said steak, pot noodle and cucumber. <laughs> so I made her it and then... This is the uh, remembrance of that, so the steak is exactly what she had for her lunch with the pot noodles, so I thought it looked quite nice actually, so I've gone kind of and done it for myself as well. So I'll uh, keep cooking, see you in a sec. Wouldn't be me, would it, if I didn't add something to it. Wow, oh, that one's dire. Let's open the other side. That's a little bit better, isn't it? Well, first of all, we just had some uh, chilli flakes. Now we've got some garlic salt. Oh, that smells beautiful already. So I haven't touched the pot noodle yet, and you'll see why very, very shortly. But we'll let this cook for a bit more. So this uh, beanies look like chocolate orange. Oh. Really quite a strong coffee with just the hint of the chocolate orange. Now you can see that I didn't have a, a great deal of hot water um, to add the coffee in. I don't know if I put too much in and weakened it or not. But I didn't really do destructions properly, I never do. <laughs> I just cook it to my liking normally or boil it to my liking. Um, so when I finish my lunch, uh, I'm going to don the poncho again. I'm going to go out on a little walk and I'm going to show you some of these permission woodlands that we've got. We're really quite lucky to have this. Uh, especially, as I said, we've got the fuel thing at the minute, because we're, we're planning on going all over. Uh, I've been speaking to, again, one of my subscribers, uh, Matt. Uh, he lives up in Scotland. Uh, we've been talking to him about going up and joining him for a wild camp. Um, I'm really, really got my heart set on it because the places he goes look absolutely stunning. And so if I've got the opportunity, I'll be straight there. Uh, train tickets, though, looking at them overnight, and we're nearly 190 quid uh, for an open return. Uh, so I might have to think about driving. So I might have to get my horse pipe out and start siphoning people. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I w I'm definitely. Uh, Gonna be jumping on board with that one, Matt. 
All right, lunch is cooking really nicely. Chicken looks a little bit raw just yet, so I'll uh, give it another minute or two. Garlic pot smells phenomenal. Making a bit of space in the pan. You can actually see why Bella wanted it now. Thanks for the tip, darling. Come out for a minute just to see what it's like out here, uh, rain wise and whatnot. And it looks like we've had uh, a couple of vandals again. So we've had got a lot, quite a lot of rubbish um, sort of strewn around. So we're gonna have to come back down another time and uh, get some litter picked up. But such a shame that these people are educated in the great outdoors. You know, we're so lucky to have spaces like this and. They keep coming, we're all going to get kicked off it. Um, but yeah, one of them things, isn't it? Right, I can smell my lunch. It's time to eat. Oh, look at this. Right, so it's time to tuck in. Might just have a few chilli flakes into this pot, maybe. Here you might be, you're gonna do that, it's got. There we go. There we go. Right, I'm gonna sit and enjoy this. I'll see you in a second. Well. This smells delicious. Follow me for more recipes. Or follow Bella. This is Bella's idea. Yeah, Tink Outdoors. She does have her own channel if you've not seen it. Go and check it out. Yeah, she wanted to come out tonight actually, but uh, the weather's a little bit too miserable. I don't think she'd enjoy it as much. She'd do it. She'd just sort of lay in a hammock and chill out, but I don't know if she'd uh, really enjoy it. But this looks phenomenal. Bella, you're a genius. <laughs> Look at this chicken. I'm trying to eat with one hand and just use my spoon here. Not for any other reason than the fact that I'm just eating on camera. Bit of chicken, a bit of pot noodle. Oh, I think you're a legend. <laughs> so simple, but so tasty. Right, well, uh, I'm not supposed you want to sit there and watch me eat all this, do you? So I'll bring you back when I'm finished, and then we'll go for a walk.
my goodness, my daughter is a genius. <laughs> I have demolished that. The bit of meat you saw was just gristle. But pot noodle, steak and chicken for lunch. You've just upped your spending money by a well done. <laughs> oh, right, I'm going to clean this up uh, using a bit of wet grass. Gets almost anything off while you're out in the field. Uh, that or baby wipes. Uh, but yeah, wet grass, clean this up on the poncho, off the little walk. Right then, I've just adjusted my uh, tarp, just raised it up a little bit. Uh, I don't set it up perfectly, just so I can walk underneath it. Um, I was stooping a little bit, so uh, I've just, as I say, raised it up. Right, let's get finished setting up now. Well, I've uh, managed to set up now. Looks really rather cosy. I've still got this end open at the moment. I'm going to shut that up and uh, close me in very shortly. Uh, just while I go for the walk. But yeah, the uh, 11 foot ultralight one wind hammock. Uh, the under quilt and obviously the top quilt poncho as well. And tarp. So yeah, complete one wind uh, setup tonight. Uh, got my, my Phoenix lantern with me. I've also got a new head torch with me that's in my backpack. Which is in the gear sling just at the side of of the hammock, um, which I'll show you in a second. But yeah, I'm uh, really looking forward to this. This tarp looks phenomenal. It's like a floating house or a floating shelter. Yeah, I'm really impressed. Again, link in the description to the tarp uh, with a discount code as well. You won't be disappointed, honestly. Right, I'm uh, going to go for a walk because I believe Daniel's here. Just before I go, um, the gear sling that you can just sort of see hanging just underneath and off centre to the hammock. Uh, got my Van Gogh Sherpa 7080 in there, and then all the things that I'm going to be cooking tonight. So I've set it, as I say, quite low using the loop aliens. I'm connected to the hammock suspension. Just quickly, we'll uh, just go around the outside showing you the tarps I'll set up. I need to just uh, neaten up that hammock strap, but it's acting as a drip line at the moment, as is the washing line. But yeah, all closed in like a floating shelter all the way around. That's my uh, tripod on the inside, my little bag of rubbish. But yeah, completely enclosed. Really, really looking forward to this. You just see my setup in the background there, just going for a little walk through the woods. Let's uh, show you what we can see. All kinds of uh, little porky holes in this little bit of woodland. It's not the biggest, but I've had some great nights down here. Nipping from here. So, sir. Not the biggest at all, it's not very wide. Probably 50 foot wide at most. Pine tree. I'll make some uh, pine tea with that one day. Yeah, I've had a hammock there. That's some really good nights in here, honestly. Squirrel. Never mind. Yeah, so it carries on probably about another 150 foot that way. But uh, let's go and find Dan. I think he's in a tent, so I've got an idea where he might be. Look who I found chilling out in the woods. In the rainy woods. <laughs> oh, <laughs> absolutely silent it now, isn't it? Oh, we haven't done bad though. But yeah, English Woodsman's joined us now. Yeah, as I said, you just seen me walk through the woods uh, and find him. I knew exactly where he'd be because he said he was in a tent, so... I need flat ground. <laughs> can't be in a tent on the even ground. No, it's horrible, isn't it? Did you see that Svalbard stuff when I did? Yeah, yeah. Had that big lump in underneath of it. Didn't find it till morning. Devoured. Right, let's uh, leave him in peace for a bit and uh, we'll chill out for ten minutes.
what a setup. So I've just come back to uh, my setup to get my cup. Dan's offered to put kettle on. So let's get my cup. So besides the uh, rain poncho, I've also got this on today. This is the uh, Hardland Tactical Insulated Ski Jacket. This is waterproof as well, but really, really warm. Um, temperature's not dropped too too far, to be honest. But uh, yeah, I'm enjoying this coat. Really warm, waterproof, loving it. Like to see, look, my wife putting kettle on. Come on, darling, you're gonna get all wet. <laughs> oh. Why have I camped so far away? Because you won't get out of your bloody hammock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not camping. I like, got a good. Looking for some wild. Look at that steam on my legs. Right then, I've uh, left on your beef for a little bit, so we're going to do some uh, more cooking. Uh, it's getting 8 o'clock, pitch black outside. I'm going to get some grub inside me, get me myself warmed up, uh, ready for bed. Uh, so yeah, I'll go through what I've uh, got to cook. So first of all, I brought with me my little zebra billy can. And uh, last time this was out, um, I burnt the plastic handles off it on purpose. And then made these DIY versions. Metal clips. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill that uh, full of oil. And then I've got a potato and an onion in there. And then I've got uh, a mushroom, a couple of onion rings, a tomato, uh, a chicken breast, the one of the one that I've had already. And then this bad boy. Look at the size of that. That size of me, bigger than me and <laughs> loving it. So yeah, I am gonna eat like a king tonight. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do, because obviously steak will take steak and chicken will take less. Uh, I'm going to start to boil the oil, uh, and then I'm going to prep like the mushroom, the tomato, the chips, uh, etc. So uh, let's get to it. All that money I've spent on knives and I've gone and forgotten. So I'm gonna to have to try and make do with this little titanium knife that I've pinched from Daniel. So just a 
simple titanium one. And see how well we can do. Might just use half the potato. Yeah, I think I will stick that back in the bag. Some chunky chips tonight. No intricacy about this, is there? Not me eating it though. To be honest, I'm still impressed with Bella's concoction that she came up with earlier. Enough. Never ever would have made that combination myself. Potatoes, more than enough chips, isn't it? In simple wet wipe. Take off any residue from anything that you've already chopped on there. half an onion back as well go for another camping meal what I suppose because you chop it anyway it makes it a lot easier to peel check on the oil in a second well I got the heat on really low anyway Should we have a look? My little uh, rubbish bag's getting a little bit full now. I know I don't harp on about leave no trace as much anymore, but you know, still adhere to it all the time. You should too. If you're new to this game, look up what leave no trace is. Oh, look at that. I'm going to cook that with a steak actually. Flat in the pan. Right. Just want the bottom of this, really. Right, so the big beef tomato, all like that. And then one slice, that's all I really need. Be more than enough. Look at that because I'm eating. Okay, I've, got in the I've got myself another rubbish bag. Took the tomato in my food bowl. These little Ziploc bags that are coming under. Right, let's neaten this bit up a bit.
just took it off while I had these in just so that I don't get any spitting. While we're uh, waiting for chips and onion rings to do, I'm just going to season up the meat. That's the chicken. Look at the size of this bad boy. Oh, oh. Will you look at that? much there but nope because you've got them wet wipes get this uh, garlic taste off my fingers And that'll do. Right, let's have a look at these. I'm getting there, some of them. Give them another minute and then I'll cook the meat. Well, we'll take these off, cook the meat, and then put them back on and then serve all in one. So, as you can see, I'm just sort of under the tap of the hammock while I'm cooking all this food. Um, it's going to be a long wet night. You can still hear the rain. Uh, Daniel's obviously had cooked and eaten. I'm down here now getting ready to eat this and then I think it's going to be just chilling out in the hammock um, what else can you do in the rain <laughs> oh, right, let's check these chips and get this steak going and just spy an onion ring there look at that oh. look at that I think they're almost done, so I'm going to take them off. I'm going to stick a old faithful on. Don't need it that high for uh, cooking the steak though. I've already put the oil in. So I'll let that get going and then add the meat. Bad boy in there now. 
<laughs> Look at the size of that. Well, the rain's just coming in. Quite heavy again. Oh, that looks phenomenal. Checked it and uh, it's even a little bit rare for me. Uh, with it being so big, it's obviously taking a little bit longer. Uh, as I've just shown you as well, the rain's come back in and uh, with a vengeance. So I'm quite glad to be under this tarp whilst I'm cooking. Right, I'll give this another minute and then throw it all together and serve up. Got the chips and onions back on uh, while the meat's breathing for a minute. But look at that so far. Right, I'd say they're done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put them uh, straight into the tin foil and let all the oil run off before I put them on the serving board. Put this oil run off while it's in the tin foil rather than on the uh, serving board. 
Let the oil cool and then I've uh, got a funnel to put it back in the bottle. But yeah, look at them. <laughs> so what I've done now is I've just picked up the chips and onion rings and I'm just running all the excess oil off straight back into the pan. Hope you could see that. Right, time to serve. Ah, I've got one. I need a bigger serving board. I'll eat that last one. What do we reckon to that, people? Now, if that ain't a meal fit for a king, I do not know what is. That looks absolutely exquisite. Uh, so, I'm just going to eat uh, on the floor from where I am. I don't want to pick it up because I'm going to drop it everywhere by the look of it. I definitely need a bigger serving board. Right, I'm going to enjoy this. See you in a minute. Well, I enjoyed that immensely. Been up and seen Dan for about half an hour or so. And then I uh, had to just come and get in the hammock. I was just wet and cold. So I needed to get out of them wet clothes. Put some dry clothes on. So I've just put some base layers on. Oh, I have brought me uh, my sleep suit as well, but it's uh, too warm for that, especially with the the doors enclosed as they are. It's trapped a lot of warm air in here. Yeah, I'm really liking this entire setup. The hammock, the underquilt, top quilt, tarp, all working perfectly. Obviously, the gasling as well. Working in tandem with this, but yeah, I'm really liking it. The under quilt, as you can see, is uh, clipped to the uh, top quilt there. And that's just so I can shove it under the hammock and know exactly where it is. Created the foot box as well, so I've got my feet in that. But the rain's eased at the moment. We'll see how it uh, fares shortly. But if Unless anything exciting happens, see you guys in the morning. I don't know if you can pick that up on there. But the wind has really, really picked up. I don't actually know that it would wind it if I couldn't hear it. So I'm not feeling it in here at all. The tarp stayed rigid. So yeah, if it wasn't for being able to hear it, I wouldn't know. Right. 
we're going to try and get some sleep at least. Good morning. I'm hiding under the quilt. <laughs> so I just pin the tops in. Because my head was cold. As you've probably seen, I've had my hair cut. So, uh, my head's been a bit chilly. So I'm going to go buy a hat, I think. For sort of sleeping in. Oh. Oh. It's half past six. I think I've been up for my eight million week. But I've had a really comfortable dry night and obviously I've just looked at the top, it's still windy, still a little bit rainy. You can probably hear the wind maybe. But the fact that the, the tarp's angled um, at the front of the doors now, it's, it's kept that like bone dry. I'll try and get a, a little bit of footage when I wake up properly. But I'm going back to sleep for about half hour or so. So I've been laid in a in little. So I've been laid here a while, listening to wind and rain, thinking I've got to get up nice and snug, warm in this quilt, and I really don't want to, but I've got to. Okay, oh. oh. do if you've uh, watched so far, please let me know in the comments that you've seen up to this point. Give the video a big thumbs up. <laughs> oh, it really does sort of help the channel and help me. Gives me a little bit of a boost knowing that I'm uh, releasing content that you like, so. Oh, right. Five more minutes. This is what I meant about the angle of the tap. So rainy there on the outer. And because of this sort of downward sloping angle, all that's bone dry. Awesome.
well that's me for another video I uh, hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have uh, if you have please give the video a big thumbs up uh, consider subscribing by pressing this in the middle and I'll leave some videos either side for you thanks for watching see you in the next one <laughs>